Uh, exciting game, first of all. Congratulations to Uzbekistan. They deserve to, to win this game. They could score a few more, but we could score a few also. Uh, to take positives out of the game, you know, if we take the goals away, which were caused again by our silly mistakes, I would call them like that, I could be even happy with the performance, you know, with intention, with uh, trying, with composure, with, with passing. But this is our reality, that's what I need to say. At the moment, this is our reality without too many key players. Once again, we lost, we lost Chante prior to this game. Liston got fever, who was doing really well at the training sessions and options were limited, to be honest. And it was obvious that strength, speed are causing us problems at this level. So we need to work on ourselves and taking positives out of everything. We are the growing league, we are the growing team. Uh, learning from the lessons like this, it will give us good momentum in the future. And also the, there is another game left, so we need to leave next five days for the last game, which is giving us hope. But the hope will be alive there only if we eliminate these micro details which are killing us at the moment. very much. So now for is yours. Microphone is available. Please raise a hand if you have any question. Once you get the microphone, please tell your organization name and then ask question. Thank you. So let's start from first row. Yes, please. Hello, coach. This is Niladri from the Hindu. Uh, the, uh, I'll start with the formation that you went with. India has looked a little, uh, a lot vulner vulnerable with the 4-3-3 shape, even against Qatar. It was 4-2-3-1. Uh, so, uh, uh, in 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 hindsight, do you see any changes in terms of passing? Because the some passes in the final third, if they were completed, India could have gone ahead and uh, caused a threat. I mean, we we started working on uh, two formations since I'm here when we've been practicing that and uh, executing drills and getting players used to that formation, which can man match any formation if we are defensively solid and not causing problems to ourselves, and we proved that. So, uh, not, I don't see nothing wrong there. I think that most of the boys were doing well today, but these limitations in accuracy in passing at certain areas are obviously giving opportunities to our opponent at the moment and we are not the team who can who can allow itself to have one player absent from the game and it is what it is you know. next question from right side Second row, please. Uh, hi, Coach Rahul from Rep Sports. So against Qatar also, we considered goal earlier inside five or six minutes, but today the same thing happened. So do you think somehow that our boys are lacking accuracy, they need to be more vigilant inside the first quarter? I can tell you that the boys look fantastic on the training pitch, you know, that they were focused, they were disciplined, they were looking great. Uh, we went into this game very confident, you know. Then you concede goals, you can concede goals first 15 seconds or last minute. It's never convenient time to concede a goal, but as I said to you, if you allow Uzbekistan time and space, they will kill you. That's what we did today. <coughs> Hi, Coach. Yes, Jim? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Coach. Ashish from Kelao. Coach, yeah. what do you think about your senior players, center back especially, Sandesh and Rahul Beke today? You know, I think they could have taken more responsibility in the box. Because first two goals, we could have, you know, defended better. I will not be harsh on any of our players, because these are the only players we have, you know. These players, which you mentioned, brought us a great clean sheet and victory against Kuwait. Uh, these are the players which I need in the certain future ahead of us. And I will be very supportive, very positive about all my players. I will try to help them to get better, to rise their game up and to work on themselves. That's what I'm doing. That's my responsibility as a coach. It's easy to get harsh on anyone, you know. Even on Ronaldo, if you want, you can be harsh for not doing this on that. But we are at the level where we are. We need to accept our realities. We need to accept how much work we have ahead of us. And also, we need to understand that there were many parts of today's game where we could enjoy our game. 
our passing, our intention, our creation, and the same problem is always there, which is brought here by not being working anything in football for last decade, not producing center forwards who can score goals and people who are clinical in the box. So that's now visible in the national team when we come to this level. Lower level we're going to control, we're going to dominate these games. We won't have in the future, as far as I'm concerned, any problems qualifying for the Asian Cups continuously. But to uh, have a better efficiency at the AFC Asian Cup, we need complete players. We either have players who can pass the ball or cannot but cannot match the strength and the speed here, or we have players with the speed and, and good passing ability, but they don't have strength. You know, so something is missing. We have several complete players who can match this level, but that's not enough. The whole team needs to be complete in all aspects of the game to match, to match this level of competition. This Asian Cup, if you look only back four years ago, for me, this Asian Cup is twice bringing twice much more quality than the last one. If you look at the team, if you look what's happening in Asia with football, how much investment has happened in the last four years in, in Asia, in football, and what's going on in, lo in all the countries who are top ten in Asia. So we need to work on ourselves a lot. Igor, um, James Legg, AFP, um, another game in which India had a big following here in, in the stadium, there's a lot of support. Yeah. I mean, what's your message to those fans going into the final game? Once again, uh, uh, we are very sad about disappointing them today, but uh, uh, as I say, that's our life at the moment. Uh, all I can say to them, sorry guys, couldn't happen today, you know, but be supportive to these boys because these boys will bring you lots of happiness this year. I, I can promise you that. And we need to stick by them, we need to be supportive to them and push them forward, you know. So there is one more game, let's stick together, let's see each other in five day time and try to push these boys to get the win in the final game which might give us opportunity to, to go forward ahead in the eliminatory round. Good night, coach. My question is that if we will comparison the Uzbekistan and Indian national teams, yes, Uzbekistan ahead of the India, but what do you think in the which aspects it, in the pitch today Uzbekistan were better than the India and for that Uzbekistan win today? Obviously they are clinical in the chances which they create. That's one thing. They didn't give away anything today, absolutely. Whatever we caused as a problem to them in their box, it was coming from us creating these momentums. On the other hand, we were the ones who allow Uzbekistan to get easy chances. You know, that, that was the, the difference, I would say. But as you look at the football globally in Uzbekistan and India, then we need to accept that Uzbekistan is working a lot better with underage groups, that they are nearly dominating under 20s, under 18s. They have fantastic generations of players and that's why the national team is becoming strong. You know, That's one point where, where we need to speed up in India to make sure that we have certain future in football because we are just organizing now or working to organize competitions at the age of under 18, under 20, which, which is not there, you know. Next question, the gentleman with cap. So second row, microphone is coming now. Yeah. Actually, just I wanted to ask you a simple question. Because in the last two matches, in our center forward, almost are lacking. Even Sunil Chetri is not able to control the ball in the last two games also. And today also the same thing was there. Do you find we have any replacement for him? No. <laughs> we don't. No Indian player is playing as a center forward anywhere. Because we are totally lacking in the in getting the forward. The defense. Gurkirat is one player who started playing now. He's 19 year old. 
maybe he might become one, you know. Ishan Padinta is on the bench. So, I'm not here to produce center forwards. The clubs are there to do that. I can only pick up the best ones. So. Next question, yes. Coach uh, Ahmad Hashim, Qatar Football Live. You are very realistic about your expectations from this tournament uh, going into the first match. Yeah. Considering what you've seen from the two games and assuming that you'll have a full strength squad, what are your expectations for the next year and, and the one after that? Listen, as, as a coach, you always need to be positive, encourage your players and enter any game whoever you play with a positive mood and speak positively and create an environment of positiveness which might lead you to a success. Uh, but I always try to be realistic about everything, you know. And I, I told you maybe a month or two months ago when I was talking about priorities for Indian football, I was realistic and well aware that with uh, losses which we suffered in losing Ashik Kurunian, Anwar Ali, Jixon and at the end Sahal Samad. That's four key players which are badly missed in our team in all aspects of the game. Either you want height, speed, technicality, physicality, whatever is there, you know. And that's a huge loss for us. So I was very realistic saying that we should have priorities, that we need to be realistic. And realistically I was looking that our main goal is to qualify for the third round of the World Cup qualifiers. We created fantastic victory against Kuwait away, and now we have everything ahead of us in our hands to make that happen, first time in Indian football history. And as I said earlier, whatever happens here, we need to learn the lessons, we need to grow as a team from these games, and that's what we're going to do, simple as that. I think that these games, if you look today, Apuya and Suresh specifically, these games are massive for these boys because these boys they are two guys who can match this level absolutely and i think that you all agree i don't have any i'm not in love with them i love them for their courage i love them for their uh, commitment for their work you know but obviously they are two boys who can play at this level we need more much more of them you know those four which are missed they can do that also you know apart from sunil who is always there. He also needs to be surrounded with many boys who can play at this level for 100 minutes. Simple as that, you know, to, to, to score goals. Someone needs to create, someone needs to bring that ball to him there so he can score. We take last question. Coach, you talked about uh, losing Changte before the game. What, we, what is the injury? When, when did it happen and how can we, when can we expect him to be back? Yes, uh, Chant, two days ago, Chante uh, felt his groin. His groin had a soreness, a big one. And we rested him yesterday. Still this morning on the screening, we could notice that that's not perfectly well for, for the game for him. And there was no reason for us to risk that boy because he's been pushing himself throughout last couple of seasons in a big way. And you could see that last couple of months he's been taped all over his legs. So what, what caused that growing problem? We need to see, we need to check and make sure that we don't lose him for what's, what's ahead of us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Miriam. So you want to ask? Yes, please. Okay, so last, very last one. Yes. Yeah. Coach, uh, you touch upon that we can't close the gap at the senior level teams like Uzbekistan, you know, the youth teams have been doing very well for the last 12 years. Do you think as a head coach of India, you should have more saying it, what going in the youth level of our uh, youth teams under 16, under 19? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, how we can expect that we can get the complete players if we don't have everything structured in our country in a proper way, if we don't get top level footballers at the age of 16, 18 and 20, we cannot have the national team which can compete at this level. Simple as that. The structure needs to be there from the age of 14 until, uh, until 23. That's, that's a process, you know. So we need to go that way, definitely. We need to be patient. Until then, we need to look for the players in the league which is there, 
you know that league is growing that league is helping us to for these players to mature to get certain games but we all know that the level of these games doesn't have quality which can match here the pace is totally different you know that's why we look confused on the pitch sometimes the opponent players are approaching us too quick taking balls from us in an easy way there is no time here at this level